of the committee here. So we'll get started. <laughs> Notice is hereby given that the City Council, make sure I'm recording here first. Yeah. Uh, Notice is hereby given that the City Council Committee on Government Services, co posted with the Committee of the Whole, will hold a committee meeting on Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, at 6 30 p.m. by a remote participation in accordance with Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 for the purpose purposes of taking action on the matters listed below. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by a technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so on matters not requiring a public hearing, we will post on the City of Salem's website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Individuals may participate remotely in the meeting by a remote participation platform called Zoom. Members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting may access the remote participation meeting through any one of the following ways. Please click the link below to join the meeting. Password 186545 to the, go to the website link, webinar ID 867-7199-3690, followed by the meeting password above if necessary. By telephones, participants can dial the toll-free number 888-475-4499 join the meeting when prompted enter the webinar ID and follow the instructions to join the meeting. Agenda, meet to discuss the land acknowledgement statement for the council to read at the opening of council meetings. We have all members of the committee present. In addition, we have Councilors Merkel, Prosniewski, Mor Council President Morsillo, Council Riccardi. We have Alphonse Wright from the Salem Human Rights Coalition. Elizabeth Solomon from the Massachusetts Tribal Council, and I think I've got everybody. Um, so thank you, everybody, for, for joining. Thank you to our guests for joining us as well. Uh, and thank you to Council Riccardi for bringing this forward. I think this is a, definitely a, a, an important starting point for a conversation. And uh, I think, you know, many of us have a lot of questions about, you know, what the best way to go about doing this, this would be. And I think that you know, I've spoken with a lot of you today. I think that it's um, like I said, it's an important starting point, but I think it's also uh, something where we want to look at and say, you know, what not only what are we um, what are we saying here, but but what's I don't want to steal Elizabeth's thunder because we, we spoke this afternoon, but but what's what's the intention? What are we trying to get out of this? What are we? Why are we doing this? And what what are, what do we hope to to do as a body um, with this information? And then to also just keep in mind that we're we're not just acknowledging history; we're acknowledging the present as well and that there's there's you know lives and people that are impacted by um by things that were done in the past um so and it's not as i spoke with a lot of you it's not necessarily we don't necessarily have to come out of this committee today after an hour-long meeting with with a decision about what we want to do i i this is important to me i'm happy to come back to this um as, as much as we need to uh to make sure that we get it right if you have had a chance to look into what other communities and organizations have done uh, across the country and there's a variety of people who have handled this in a lot of different ways. And I think some have been a check the box, paint by number kind of solution. And some have been very thoughtful and respectful. Um, and I think obviously we want to take, we want to take it that, uh, in that direction. Um, so I think I'll just kick it off with, uh, Elizabeth, if, you, if you're willing to sort of just discuss, um, if the Massachusetts Tribal Council, um, has, has had conversations around land acknowledgement, um, and sort of, I guess, uh, what, what's, where do you feel like the starting point should be for our, our group? Well, thank you so much, and thank to everyone for um, your interest in, in, in hearing about this possibility. Um, <clears throat> we've worked, I, I, think, I think probably most folks know that um, there's been a tendency in the past two or three years um, in the United States, although it's something that's much more longstanding in other countries, particularly Canada and Australia and New Zealand, um, around um, having land acknowledgements. Um, <clears throat> and so there's been a flurry, really, in the past five years around this. Um, and just so that folks know, there's sort of been a, um, a, a change or a, a, a maybe a progression of thinking among indigenous communities around land acknowledgements. Um, and um, 
I think initially it was really um, exciting for, for indigenous communities um, here in the United States to hear that people were interested in, do, interested in doing land acknowledgements from the standpoint of that um, until recently, we've pretty much been invisible in many ways, um, particularly in the Northeast. Um, however, um, as it's kind of gotten more traction, um, I think it has become more, I guess, I guess the word could be trendy, um, that people are feeling like, okay, folks are doing a land acknowledgement, we need to do a land acknowledgement, so what does that all mean? And um, I, for a very long time, though, have been um, encouraging any group um, who's considering doing a land acknowledgement to really take some time and think about why one wants to do a land acknowledgement in the first place. And that's a very internal process. It's not something that you know, tribal members, regardless of the tribe, can really assist with because really that's, that's something that any individual institution or municipality or, um, <clears throat> or like a lot of times this, this happens frequently in schools uh, uh, on higher education. Um, really, um, that really is a very individual thing that people need to do their internal work around about what does it mean for any particular entity or institution to decide to do a land acknowledgement. Um, and then once that, that discussion happens in terms of what the reasoning behind it is, then I think the second step is thinking about, okay, what does that mean going forward? Um, is the land acknowledgement, are you just checking the box? Or does this mean something in terms of how you are engaging with indigenous communities and or how you are um, operating going forward? Um, one of the things that I think that frequently happens is people go immediately from land acknowledgement to what does that mean? Um, and honestly, that there's a big range of things that that, that could be. Um, I do want to say that a lot of times people have some, I, what, I've rec what I've seen recently um, is a lot of folks being very concerned about um, what it means, particularly when lawyers get involved, and apologies to anybody who's a lawyer here, um, <laughs> um, particularly when attorneys get involved, really kind of thinking about, okay, so what does it mean to acknowledge? Um, and so what we see it is as acknowledging that we are the original inhabitants of this of this place and that we continue to be here. Um, a lot of times people go immediately to like, OK, what does that mean in terms of land? What does that mean in terms of title? Um, that is honestly not where we're thinking. Um, we our tribe has made an explicit um, um, decision not to do anything to displace anyone from their homes. That's what happened to us. We do not want to do it to anyone else. The other thing is that we all we recognize that we're all here together. That that we have to be here together. We're all going to stay here, and really kind of finding ways um, that 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 allow us to be together respectfully and and um, in collaboration in ways that really kind of um, honor all of us who are here now. Um, does that mean that the history that we're talking about is not difficult? Do we know that does it mean that the history that we're talking about is not brutal? No. Um, but that's just the history. Um, and I think what's really important is um, how we are now and how we plan to move forward. Um, I, when I was talking earlier to Ty, and pr forgive me if you, if, if that's, I should, uh, should talk with you. Yeah, I, I'm very informal. So, so, 
and I work I work at Harvard with faculty members and I, we all call each other by our first name. So I'm really kind of used to like this first name thing. So, but if at yep. any time I like kind of that's that's a, going too far, just let me know. I want to be respectful. Um, so, and of course, by going into that, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but could somebody, would Ty, can you remember where I was before? Yeah, as, I, as, I was, as I was talking to Ty. Um... Uh, yeah, yeah. As I was talking, as I was talking to Ty, one of the things that I said is that my approach to this in the city of Salem is maybe very different than it would be in some of the other municipalities um, in the Commonwealth and in our, in our, within our territory. Um, we have actually found our interactions with the city of Salem to be um, very welcoming and open. Um, I have worked um, pretty closely for a number of years with Elizabeth Peterson, who I cannot speak more highly about, um, and and really feeling like that there is an interest within the city in engagement. Um, one of the things that I that I tend to say, and that that Indigenous communities um, are really uh, our tradition is around relationship, not around transaction. So really that, that, that the idea of building relationship is very important to us. And it's a thing that we probably value more than anything else, both within our own communities and with our relationships with other communities. So um, for instance, if I was talking to another municipality with whom we had had no interaction, I would be approaching this in a very different way because I wouldn't necessarily be clear um, or have an, an idea of, of what the openness is of the members of the community or the members of the, um, the, the, the municipal government are in terms of engagement. And so I feel much more comfortable um, exploring this with you because I feel like there if it's not the entire city of Salem, there are certainly key people who are very interested in engaging with the tribe. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And I think that a lot of us are going to have a lot of questions probably, but I did want to get to Alphonse uh, very quickly and just have uh, acknowledged that. Also, I want to acknowledge that Councilor Dominguez is here as well, and I think he's the only one that's joined us since then. Um, get to Alphonse from the Salem Human Rights Coalition and possibly have him just go through the uh, the process at what, what used to be No Place for Hate in creating the land acknowledgement and then uh, their their reasons for putting a pause on that. And I, I, if I've used the wrong language there, let me know, Alphonse, but uh, if you want to just go through that. Thank you, Chair Person. Um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak here. Um, and Elizabeth, it's great to, to have you present here. I, I feel much more comfortable with this process with, with your attendance. Um, so the the land acknowledgement for the um, for no place for hate um, I think came about before I actually joined um, and I, I actually there, there's someone else on this call who could speak more to how it originated and what it was intended for um, and that's Councillor Cohen um, but I will speak to why I decided to discontinue reading the land acknowledgement and it goes a lot to um, as I've spoken with some other uh, other councillors here. Uh, really, the, the, the topic of, of the indigenous peoples didn't come up outside of October or November. And I felt it was just lip service, and I'm not about lip service. Um, and until such a time as I was comfortable that either the city of Salem or our group in particular was doing something with or for the indigenous population, I did not want to have a land acknowledgement because it it felt like it was pandering. It felt fake. Um, and I'm really hopeful that the, the outcome of this leads to something where we are, as you said, building a better relationship, something positive, something we're working towards. Uh, and if that happens, I'd be more than happy to uh, reinstitute the land acknowledgement. But I didn't want to, I didn't like reading it off and then just leaving it out there. It just felt disingenuous. 
Yeah, Councillor Cohen, do you want to add to uh, to that? Thank you, Alphonse. Uh, thank you, Chair Hapworth. Uh, yeah, so, um, and I think Councillor uh, Prosnowski should be recognized as someone who was an original member of the formerly No Place to Hate Committee and was part of this process. So about six, seven years ago, uh, one of our then members, Mike Millett, um, uh, brought to our uh, attention uh, his desire to have Indigenous People Day as a holiday in Salem. And we spent several years um, with really some uh, necessary and uncomfortable uh, conversations, many people from the community, many people from outside of Salem. Um, and um, at some point we brought um, this to uh, Councilor, then Councilor Medor, who was the liaison for uh, the then No Place for Hate Committee, who, um, and then we met uh, Farrah Wilson, myself, uh, Councilor Medor, and Mayor Driscoll. And that's uh, was the impetus for uh, the city uh, doing Indigenous People Day. A um, um, few years after that, uh, Farrah and I became co-chairs, and Farrah Wilson uh, really started the process of us having a land acknowledgement. So we did have some discussion. We did have a vote. Um, I don't disagree with um, uh, Alphonse, who, um, along with Sam Lim, are the current co-chairs of the Salem Human Rights Coalition about, you know, they're wanting there to be something, a corresponding conversation or dialogue or, um, you know, some ongoing discussion. Uh, but that's how it all came about at No Place to Hate. Thank you, Councillor Cohen. Any members of the committee or the committee the whole have any questions for um, either Elizabeth or Alphonse? Council McLean, do you have your hand up? Oh, I'm sorry. Council Riccardi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, not being a member of the committee. Um, I just want to start by saying thank you to our guests for visiting and for also for everyone on the council that was able to join tonight for this conversation. Um, I understand, you know, similar to what was just mentioned, difficult conversations, heavy conversations that I think are important to have. Um, and I'm appreciative of the time um, from our visitors to share their knowledge and share their information with us. I know it's not a, an easy lift and I truly do appreciate it. Um, I, I put a late order in, I hate doing late order, but I put a late order in to have this conversation because I do feel it's important to, um, I think Alphonse mentioned this, to kind of stretch the conversation outside of just November, or I'm sorry, October when it when it comes up kind of annually. And um, another note, which I thought was interesting that um, Elizabeth, you mentioned at the very beginning, I, I worked for a Canadian company and I was chatting with a, a coworker at the beginning of the year and he just started at my company and he was telling me about the preamble that even at corporations, at private companies, they state a land acknowledgement meeting at their beginning of their, of their meeting. So not even just public meetings. And I was, I was really impressed with that. And I was like, wow, we should get on our game and let's, let's get started. So, um, and then also in my research, I've been trying to find out, you know, the background to it. So I really appreciate the, the insight that you provided to that earlier, Elizabeth. That was very helpful. Um, and there are a lot of resources online as well that I was able to look at, especially I just started digging into the project that you did with Salem State. Um, and they have a, a great website there um, and uh, watching videos. So I, I'll send the link out to that later on if everyone's not aware of that. But I was I was really impressed with the information there. And then I started asking the why, because I, I do think that that's very important. We should not be having just a performative statement made. Um, so I'll throw out my whys to kind of get that conversation going. Um, I think, again, to, to have this topic be something that is a topic that is, A, is a topic that people are, are discussing and that is on, uh, on everyone's mind, um, similar to making the invisible visible. You know, there's no way to do that without acknowledging it and, and being verbal about it and making an actual statement. Um, so I think that that's really, I think the biggest piece for me is to use the, the area, the arena, the platform that we have in taking a step towards that. 
Um, and that's really kind of a, a simplistic way of, of what I was thinking. Um, and I think it's, that's a great way to start this conversation and to see, you know, what everyone else is, is thinking as to like, why do we want to do this? Do we want to, you know, what's kind of the, the conversation behind that piece and, and what can we do to help, um, to help really. Um, I really do appreciate the, the information that was provided at, at the beginning here and also the additional research. I mean, I, I, I've actually really enjoyed by kind of digging into the research of this and learning more. And I guess that's my other why um, of, you know, being able to share that knowledge and to really have everyone, you know, be able to, to learn um, and, and grow from this. Um, that's it for now. Any other members of the committee or the count or the committee of the whole that would like to ask questions or make a statement? Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, especially not being a member of the committee. Uh, yes, I, I, I want to re reiterate what uh, Councilor Riccardi said. Uh, this was already really um, a, a, an interesting, you know, kind of a little eye opening as uh, to, you know, what to what really should go into this, it really needs to be a thoughtful process, you know, so it's just not something you throw out there. There are really, uh, those are really great perspectives and food for thought for me um, personally. I'm glad to hear that, uh, Solomon, that your interactions with, with Salem, you know, ha have been, you know, have been positive and welcoming. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, I view this, you know, with, you know, if it's a thoughtful process in you know, a learning process that it, it would be, it would, it, I think it would be good to take, you know, a step in this direction uh, to, you know, to do something, you know, of this nature and to have it part of a broader effort, you know, just not an isolated act. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, it should be, you know, part of, a, you know, a broader approach to, you know, to um, acknowledgement and uh, and respect. And, yeah, I, I, I'm grateful for the conversation and I look forward to it continuing. And, and uh, I, I like the idea of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Merkel. Elizabeth, did you, I think you and I spoke about this today. Did, did you, um, did you work with Elizabeth Peterson on the, uh, the, the acknowledgement that we have in City Hall and uh, at the Witch House, or do you know how that came about, if you have any knowledge around that? So um, I did not work with her directly. I think there were other members of the tribe that did some work on that. I think I may have done a little bit. Um, and that's kind of one of the things also just kind of like thinking about like there's in the time since that's happened, there has been, you know, some some more deeper thinking about what a land acknowledgement should be and um one of the things that you know i was talking about earlier was that that one of the purposes or well there's a number of purposes in terms of um trying to about why you want to do um a land acknowledgement one of them is to um as i encourage people as part of the land acknowledgement to talk about what their steps are around that. Um, and, and again, I, I really kind of, it could, I feel really comfortable talking about this with Salem because I feel like the work that I've done um, primarily through the impetus of, of Elizabeth Peterson, um, we've done um, um, some presentations at the, the Salem Witch House, we've done some um, presentations for Indigenous Peoples Day. We, I don't, I, I assume that all of you know about the portrait that's happening um, of, 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 of Massachusetts people that has been um, commissioned by the city of Cambridge um, with an Indigenous artist um, and that we, that the tribe has been uh, um, uh, very much involved with and is still involved with and is going quite well. Um, there's, said, um, just to cut in real quick, you said that you met the city of Salem, not the city of Cambridge, correct? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I did mean the city of, I, I'm also doing some stuff with the city of Cambridge. So I, <laughs> I also work at Harvard, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I really kind of feel that, that we're really, that, that there, that the development of that relationship is very much already in process. 
Um, and, and so what I would say in terms of this particular um, land acknowledgement, I think it is very helpful from the standpoint of um, um, trying to get people more oriented about what the history of this place is prior to colonization, because we, particularly in Salem, which is one of the first um, cities of settlements um, in the colonies, um, that there's so much emphasis on the colonial history that it's really important um, to kind of reorient people to the idea that there were people here before then and that we continue to be here. Um, so I would encourage folks to kind of go a little bit further. And I think that, you know, I think that's something that it's, it's, it's part of a, of a process. And um, a land acknowledgement done once doesn't mean that it has to stay the same forever. Um, um, relationships develop, um, ways people interact, develop and change over time. Um, and so um, this is fine. Um, it's more educational than anything else, which is good. Um, and, and I think that, that, again, a land acknowledgement really is specific to the needs of the entity that is doing the land acknowledgement and to the tribal people that are involved. So this land acknowledgement that um, we're looking at here is serve the purpose of what, what, what was happening at the time. Councilor watson -Tow. Thank you, Chairperson Hopworth. Um, Ms. Solomon, thank you so much for being here. Uh, to add to um, just what the, some of the other councilors have said, and uh, uh, the point I, you seem to uh, maybe be making as well is that I, I, I so I personally feel that land acknowledgements are important and um, an act of humility and are an, an opportunity for education for sure. And I think that in my own personal experience with land acknowledgements on um, classes that I've taken and programs that, that we've done, which have been virtual. And so people make land acknowledgements from wherever they happen to be physically located um, has been fascinating and important. And, um, and really eye-opening and um, really moving. And I, so for my, my own personal part, I also happen to be a hit, big history nerd. I, um, I perceive it as being a really, like I said, an act of humility and also, um, and also something that I think about frequently, a sort of meditative way I approach the idea of public service. It's really complicated for me, I think, to think about how we function and serve within the structures of the colonized uh, government process that has been created here, right? And that's what we do every day in a way that's really, um, that really acknowledges the, the you know, the, the continued um, disregard, neglect, and, and, and harm done to our Indigenous neighbors. Um, the one thing about, in addition to your point about this statement, particularly being really educational, which I think is great for the walls of City Hall, right? I think it's really helpful. Um, I do note that it it does not acknowledge the act of colonization, which I think is interesting. Um, and, and so my own personal position with this statement or whatever statement, if we were to move forward with that, would be that we have to openly acknowledge that this is unceded land um, colonized by our predecessors. And um, and that would be one one additional note I, I would want to make for, for this group's consideration and for conversation. Um, and I think that you know, like I said, I I, I, I think it's an I think I I think it's an opportunity to bring attention and awareness. Um, but I do also acknowledge that it's a, a potential uh, the gap for sort of you know savior saviorhood in a way without being able to to continue those those acts of, um, of forward movement for the mission throughout the year. But this is this, I do think this would be one way that we could bring attention and to, um, and to approach, to approach our conversations with humility and, and acknowledging that we are functioning within a colonized society. Um, 
on colonized land and figure out how, you know, to, to acknowledge that that's, that, that that is gonna always be a difficult um, and sometimes tense uh, process, but that if we come with, to it with humility and understanding and acknowledgement, then, then maybe we're all at least coming from a good place. <laughs> So that, those are just, you know, my initial thoughts on, on all of that. Thanks. Councilor Varela. Thank you, Chair Hapworth. And uh, Ms. Solomon, thank you so much for your time tonight. And uh, I, I appreciate hearing your perspective on, you know, what we can do, how, how we can do more uh, with the conversation. And I think one thing that I think really, for me, sums it up is, uh, land use and how we use that land. And I think uh, one example of uh, what we've done in our city is we started a uh, project on, it's called Mac Park. Uh, years ago, before it was called Mac Park, it was called Ledge Hill Park. Um, and uh, we started to have some conversations um, with some um, indigenous entities uh, related to how within agriculture that land was used. And I think, you know, uh, we started a project called Mac Park Food Farm, where we have a food forest and we practice traditional agriculture. And through those conversations, I think it's important that when it comes to, you know, the education piece of this, how we connect our community and our residents to, you know, uh, how this land was used and continuing that conversation uh, uh, with, with our indigenous people. So. I think that's, you know, when we look to continue with projects for the city, I think a way we can engage with, uh, you know, connecting uh, the processes here are land use and how we use that um, and be mindful of uh, where it came from. So I appreciate it. And I think, you know, we can do more with that. I think that's where we can really make the conversation uh, really impactful. Thank you. Thanks so much. I, we can have a huge conversation about that. Uh, um, um, from the standpoint of that really kind of thinking about land use um, from an Indigenous perspective, um, we probably wouldn't use the word use. Um, and so really kind of thinking about, because our, our traditional cos cosmology would see ourselves as part of the land, a part of the environment, not as an entity that would use the environment. And so really, I mean, I think that's a real opportunity to, to kind of um, think about different perspectives about how we actually exist and interact with our environment. Um, and um, that's exciting to me. I'm also involved on a, uh, on a uh, rematriation project in Metro West where I live where we have a group of mostly indigenous women who are working on who we're just getting started so don't ask for any more details um, <laughs> but um, who are working on really kind of um, reconnection with the land from an indigenous perspective but that's something that I think is really exciting to me and I think could be very enlightening to people who are not indigenous Councilor Cohen. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Hapworth. I, I just wanted to ask uh, Councilor McLean, I thought you had your hand up, and if you did, uh, if you wanted to go before me. Um, I did, but you can you can go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for coming, um, and also Alphonse. I think there's a lot of synergy to what both of you were talking about. Uh, and I very much appreciate what Council Watson felt said. Um, there was a reference to that, uh, the colonization piece in what No Place for Hate used to uh, say in their land acknowledgement. And I think that was very important because that was another means of having a discussion. And I think this is very timely um, because there are states of passing laws that make it um, so that people can't teach things that make people that look like me feel uncomfortable. And unfortunately, that's becoming more of uh, the norm than it should be. Um, and it made me think that um, I, my minor in college was American history, but I didn't know about the Tulsa massacre. 
I was never taught that. 50% of American students are unaware that there was actually a Holocaust. And how many people in Salem know what the word Nomkeg refers to? And it makes me wonder why racism, anti-Semitism, and bigotry are so prevalent. So if we're going to approach an equitable society, I think we must realize how we got here. And so I think this process of developing a land acknowledgement that, as Elizabeth said, was a process that wasn't something that was, you know, carved in stone and something that we can adapt over time as people understand the history, I think is really important. Council McLean. Thank you, Chair Hopper. Um, uh, through you to Elizabeth, uh, th thank you for joining us for this conversation. I, I think I'd like to ask, I think I'd like to ask your opinion on what are the elements of a, of a successful ongoing relationship. You, you spoke to sort of the, the seeds that had been planted in sort of working with Elizabeth. Um, we've heard comments about you know, the sort of educational content of the statement. Um, Councillor Watson felt sort of spoke to the emotional content as well a little bit. So I'm, I'm interested in hearing more about, you know, how it proceeds well from here, kind of what makes that happen. Well, one thing I'll say, and, and I, and it, it's kind of interesting because um, one thing that Elizabeth Peterson has asked me a couple of times is like, well, what are other municipalities doing, you know, and what are the, what are the models um, that we should be learning from? <laughs> Say Salem is the model. So I can't, like, I can't express more strongly how, how Salem has really, in my experience, taken the lead in this in a very positive way. Um, I will say that I can't really answer that question because if you think about if you think about a relationship, all relationships are different. So the relationships that we might have with Salem are very different than the relationships that we might have with Beverly, which just over the bridge. Um, and I think it really depends on where the different um, folks that make up the relationship where they are and where they want to go. Um, and so I think for us, just like a land acknowledgement is something that changes over time, so does a relationship. Um, and right now, I honestly feel like the relationship with Salem is in a very good place. And I only can think of it getting better and richer and for, for, for both the indigenous community and for the, the, the residents of Salem. And I will say no one in our tribe currently lives in Salem, um, but, but, but that's, that doesn't change our connection to the place. So um, I say that from the standpoint of just um, saying that I, I don't know how to answer that question, but I would say that we are currently on a good path. Thank you. Uh, Chair Hapworth, if I may just follow up on that just very briefly. Um, I, I, I guess I, I'd like to ask kind of specifically, uh, just thinking about your response to Councillor Vervella and the terminology of land use. I, I've noticed that one of the things that has really come forward in Salem recently, and one of the things we're really putting a lot of energy into as a council is our response to climate change. We have a lot of initiatives in play uh, relative to the city and that that feels really connected to place uh, in a way that I think often our municipal conversations are not. And so I'm curious just to learn more about what is the sort of indigenous perspective on this moment, because I think that is something that's really part of our identity as a city right now. And so I, I wonder about the tie in there. Yeah, um, actually, I, I don't know if folks are familiar with um, Stone Living Lab, which is a um, lab that's primarily 
focused at UMass Boston and Boston Harbor Now and the city of Boston and DCR and a number of folks are involved in it, but it's a, it's a, a lab that's looking at um, um, coastal resilience. And I'm on both the steering committee and the executive board for that. Um, and these are some of the questions, these are some of the very issues that are coming up in terms of um, um, how, to, how to respond to climate change. And one of the things that, that I often say is that 10,000 years ago, Boston Harbor was dry land. And, and I mean, like well past the Harbor Islands. And so realizing that, that we do not live in a static world and being able to kind of um, really internalize that from the standpoint of that the world will change and we need to change with it. Um, and so one of the things that, that I keep pushing back in terms of in my work with the Stone Living Lab is that people are always thinking about how can we preserve the environment the way it is. And that might be something that's possible in the short term, but it's not probably possible in the long term. And the other thing to think about is that the other thing that, that we kind of bump up against, and it's a very good group. I mean, I will say that they, they are incredibly open to multiple perspectives. Um, but one of the things that I say is like when they're talking about long term, they're talking 50 years. For us, long term is like two to three hundred years, and so the thing that would be that I would encourage people to think about is not just looking at the immediate, but starting to look at what are things going to look like in two hundred, three hundred, four hundred years, and how can we prepare ourselves and the people that we are responsible for for those those eventualities. Thank you very much. Alphonse, Mr. Wright. Thank you, Chairperson Hepworth. I hope I'm not uh, stepping on protocol here. Um, since the language for the land acknowledgement for No Place for Hate has come up in discussion, I actually had it ready to share if people wanted to see that. Please. Are you able to share from where you are? I believe I am. Yes. It's only 69 words, but I think it was fairly succinct. Not saying this should be the model, but as far as inclusive language that you might want to use. Elizabeth, uh, do you have any any immediate reaction? I don't know if you've had a chance to look at this or if you had any thoughts around this. What, I'm unmuted. You... you think after two years of being on Zoom, I would like remember to unmute, but no. <laughs> I think that's actually quite good. Um, and I think that um, that the fact that it is talking about that is just one step. Um, and that the idea of moving forward, I would like to see something in terms of around the, air, the around the issue of relationship. Um, and I will say, as what I was, as I sort of alluded to earlier, um, I would say um, the attorneys are going to have an issue with unseated, um, because what does that what what does that mean? I mean. Um, and yes, it's unseated, but um, I don't necessarily require that um, entities put in the words unseated. If they want to, that's great. But I, I will just kind of give you a little bit of forewarning that that may be a stumbling block going forward. And that is not something that we necessarily feel the tribe does not necessarily feel needs to be in a land acknowledgement. Um, we never considered 
that we owned the land. We held the land. We still hold the land. Um, whether we, you know, have actual um, agency in terms of what's happening with it. Um, so I think that is the truth, but it's a tough truth in today's world. I mean, I even had a, an issue with a, an entity who will not remain unnamed that even had an issue with using the word hold, word hold because that's what I usually say, is that we we are the um, original, you can say stewards, stewards and holders of the land. And an entity had a problem with just the word, word hold because of concerns about what that meant in terms of um, title, ownership, whatever. And the way we kind of look at it is that one, as I said earlier, we have made a commitment not to displace people from their homes. That's that's something that we cannot in good conscience do. Um, and then the other thing is that if there is not clear title to something, there's not clear title. What you say or don't say does not really matter. So, but I, but I just kind of say like, just, just know that that is probably as it goes through what different processes that that's going to be, you know, something that someone is going to say at some point, we can't say that. Um, okay. Th thank you, Alphonse. That was, that was helpful to have that up there. Um, Elizabeth. Mindful of the time here that we don't want to we don't want to take up too, too much of your time here tonight. Um, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions just about, I guess, to to uh, reiterate what we just talked about. So I think you, you mentioned something around um, including some language around relationships. Um, wondering if you could clarify that just or, or what what sort of what we should be thinking about when we think about adding the word relationships or the concept of relationships into a, a statement. Well, it ties back, I think, to what I said is like when both in terms of like why you're doing a land acknowledgement and then what that means, what's your responsibility around that. Um, so, you know, by saying, by giving a land acknowledgement that sets up some level of um, responsibility or reciprocity. Um, and, and that's why I said like, okay, so what does that mean? And so, and, and generally that should be somewhere around an area of relationship building. And um, one of the easiest things could be, um, and this is just a, you know, like just something out of the bag of possible possibilities is that, you know, Salem will undertake to include um, indigenous history in all of its all, all of the things that it, it does. So that, that that would be one thing. And that is actually already starting to happen. Um, but but I think again, it's sort of it's it's really really dependent upon the interests, the commitment, um, and I guess the capacity of whatever entity saying we want to be in relationship. And so there's a huge range there. Um, so, you know, could it be like, so one of the things, for instance, that we're, we're talking about, and I, I also work, um, volunteered for um, on um, leadership on the Harbor Islands, and one of the things we're talking about in terms of that is is the possibility of co-management of those of those spaces. That's that's a very that's a whole other level. And not saying that that's and I'm only putting these things out just from the standpoint of like these are different things that different entities might think about, but that there's no there's no set answer because it really again it's around relationship and reciprocity and those things are unique to whatever relationship you're talking about. I hope that helps answer the question. 
That does that does help. Um, if we and, and again, still being mindful of your time, recognizing that we're not going to get you on all of these meetings uh, for sure. Uh, if once we come up with some sort of a, if we do decide to move forward and come up with a, a, a land acknowledgement statement, um, I would it be possible for the Massachusetts Tribal Council to to vote on that? I know we, that would we use, yes, yeah. Oh. But I would still say like, don't move too fast. Mm -hmm. Don't move too fast really spend the time thinking about what it means for the city council to have a land acknowledgement. And that should not necessarily be a quick process. I think I would, I would agree with that for sure. Um, so I think that the, maybe a good place for us to think about this is that we, we take this feedback that we've heard here today. I think we have some conversations to have around um, what, a, what the land acknowledgement looks like, if it's for one of the two that we put up today or if it's something completely different. Um, taking some of this feedback in here about about relationships, about the about the go forward process. And then I would like to if the if the if the uh, the committee is um, open to it, I would like to it's not doesn't hold any weight here locally in Salem, but I would like to have the Massachusetts Tribal Council uh, vote on whatever we come up with and then bring it back to council. Um, council Marcello. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I want to start by saying this has been a really interesting discussion for me. Um, and I, I agree with uh, Mr. Wright in that I really want to take the time to make sure that if we do this, that we do it the right way and that it speaks to us as a council. Um, the worst thing that could happen is that we have a statement that's read every two weeks and it just becomes part of the agenda, right? That somebody says it. And that's my real fear here. Like we're not here for the next 20 years. This, these seats change. And so I think if we decide to do, to go forward with a land acknowledgement statement that we have to build into the rules that we come back to it every two years, take a quick look at it. Does this still fit up, fit for what we are, who we are as a council and who we are as a city. Um, and, you know, what, I, I, I think it's just, as you said, Elizabeth, that it, you have to just keep growing and changing and looking at things from a fresh point of view. Um, but one thing that really struck me, and, and I really want, if we do this, I really would like this land acknowledgement statement to to um, ground us as counselors at the beginning of our meeting. Like, so it needs to speak to what we do also, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of what we do has to do with the land, right? It has to do with zoning. It has to do with climate change. It has to do with how we're interacting with the land in Salem. And so that really struck me as something that if we could fit that in, that kind of a future look towards how we interact with the land um, as people in Salem and what we're doing as a council along those lines. Um, that was just something to me that that struck me from your conversation. Um, but this is a really good process and this is going to take a little while um, to to find something that is appropriate and will not just become something that's said in the meeting. So that's thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Prosniewski. Mr. Chair, first of all, uh, Ms. Sullivan, I want to thank you for coming and presenting with us. I wish we were in person because even though we are in Zoom, I can, I can look into your eyes and, and feel the depth and history and uh, the passion um, with, with what you're doing. And um, I can tell you that I have uh, nothing but the uh, utmost, utmost respect uh, for what we're doing here to uh, uh, to recognize what what history is. Two years ago when we got sworn in um, and the other councilors that I hear, Councilor Morcillo and Halfworth and uh, Councilor Riccardi, you know, I don't know if you remember, but um, the clerk took us down to the vaults and she showed us the original parchment, the original document that was signed over to the city by the indigenous people in Salem. And I remember just scratching my head saying, what is this doing down here? This is priceless history. This everybody should be seeing, not just us special elected counselors. I remember growing up in, in Salem in, in the history, 
of it. And I, one of the things that stood out was in my history classes was that, you know, I was taught that the indigenous people never took the land and, and looked at it as a commodity, something that was sold or transferred. It's something that was part of the people, part of, part of earth. And that, that stuck with me. That stuck with me. And, uh, you know, till today, listening to this just brings back waves of, uh, of, of, of thoughts and, emo and, and emotions as to who, who we are, where we are, and why, why we are here. The fact that we're doing a, a, an acknowledgement is, is minuscule compared to what we sh really should be doing. I think that um, the city has taken the right path by um, having someone, uh, you know, commission a portrait of what they believe to be was the indigenous people of this area. And there was talk about the placement of that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when I walk into council chambers and I look to the right of the podium and I see, I see that life-size picture alongside of who's ever taken that podium with a story of where, where that we are guests. We are all guests of, of this land. And these were the people that were the first guests. And this is the history that should be taught. Land acknowledgement statement is nice. And yes, it would be nice to do something nice and, and, and um, recognizing it, but that's just, just the first step. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm challenging the, the, the city council to make sure that we do something, um, just like Council Morcillo said, there's a lot more than just this. This is, this is history. This is something that has to be brought forward and, 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 um, and, and presented properly uh, with, uh, with homage, with respect, with integrity, uh, because this this is where we all came from. So, thank you for that. Thank you, Councilor Prosniewski. I'll say that I, I as, as with Councilor Morcillo and Prosniewski, that that land comment did stick with me. I think that that's a good uh, a good seed to plant here. I think around. I mean, so much of what we do is about how we how we use the land, and we can't necessarily get past that. But I think that. Um, us all remembering that and sort of that perspective that we are we are the land we are part of the land we're not we're not we're not here to exclude people from places or to you know uh, I think there's that's something that we could certainly keep in mind I think that's a, a really nice seed to plant for for what this could potentially be um, any last questions for for Elizabeth or Alphonse or or any member of the committee here before we before we begin to wrap this up. Uh, Mr. Wright. Um, not, I guess it's a question for the, the council as a whole. Um, I would be, if acceptable, I'd be very interested in helping to draft whatever uh, acknowledgement, if we end up going with one, uh, comes out of this. I already have ideas uh, <laughs> on um, language and acknowledging how we have, by one means or another, taken over the uh, solemn duty of stewardship of the land and how it, that is the responsibility of the council to maintain that. Um, I, I think uh, Council Marcillo and, and uh, Ms. Solomon made excellent points of how those sh that should be part of a vow, I guess, if anything, uh, for the city council going forward. And I would agree. I, I would imagine that we'll, we'll see what happens with this tonight. I, I would imagine this will stay in committee tonight. And, I, and, and so, so, so this stays in committee with, with no place for hate. So I, I, I think this would, or I'm sorry, Salem Human Rights Coalition. This will, this will stay, uh, this, you continue to be a part of this process if you choose to continue to attend when, as we schedule these. Any other, any other questions? Well, I guess I, at, at this point, then I would take, again, I would just, take a moment to thank thank Elizabeth for joining us. I think that was that was very valuable. I think that was very if I were just tuning in as a guest, I'd be happy to hear hear all of that. I think that was a, an interesting perspective. Um and and thank Alphonse for joining. Uh I would take a, a motion uh before we wrap up unless Councillor Cohen, I don't know if you have a, a, a last comment or a motion. Uh, I'd like to move that we keep this in committee and um, I guess I'm going to defer to you, Chair Hapworth. Is it possible that we include in the motion that uh, a date to meet again and that um, we coordinate with the Human Rights Coalition? Um, yeah, so I can, uh, we can choose a date here tonight and, and 
make that part of the motion or we can work offline and, and figure that out as well, whatever whatever the committee feels is appropriate. Did you have, uh, Councilor Cohn, did you have a date that you were looking to? Uh, I'll move that we um, keep this in committee and uh, meet again within the next two months and coordinate a statement or acknowledgement first draft with the Human Rights Coalition. Council President Morcillo, I think, had a had her hand up. I was just going to I was thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just going to suggest that you don't set a specific date. Um, yeah, go for a goal because um, it will depend on what the calendar has. Um, but uh, and and sure, a first draft for a conversation sounds like a good good idea. Can, can you finish that 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 uh, thought? I think I might have missed that, Councillor Cohen. Uh, so move to keep this in committee meet within the next two months. Then did you say something about a draft? I might have missed that. In my okay, statement. so I move that we keep this in committee uh, with a goal of meeting again in the next two months or sometime similar to that, and that we coordinate a first draft with the Human Rights Coalition. Okay. Second by was that Council Varela? So the motion is to keep this in committee, meet within the next two months, and coordinate a first draft of the Human Rights Coalition, seconded by Council Varela. Um, Council Watsonfelt? Yes. Councilor McLean? Yes. Councilor Varela? Yes. Yes. Councilor Cohen? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So that's five members voting, five in the affirmative. Elizabeth, you had your hand up. Yes, I just want to say that um, this has been actually um, a very wonderful meeting. Um, I can't tell you how many meetings I go to in terms of municipal meetings with that are much more um, challenging, shall we say. <laughs> so, so I, I, um, I offer um, my assistance as needed. Um, and um, thank you. Uh, you can leave us a five-star review on Yelp if you like. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That, 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 that means a lot. We appreciate that. It takes, it takes a lot for any kind of a committee meeting to be, to be interesting or, or enjoyable. So we, we appreciate hearing that for sure. And, uh, and we're as grateful to you as I'm, I'm more, more grateful to you than you are to us, I'm sure. Um, thank, thank you all. Uh, with, with that, do we have a, another motion? Councilor Varela? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Councilor Watsonfeld. Uh, Councilor Watsonfeld? Yes. Councilor McLean? Yes. Councilor Varela? Yes. Councilor Cohen? Yes. And I am a yes. That's so five members voting, five in the affirmative. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate this conversation. <laughs> have, a, have a great night.